A lot of people have been asking me about education at Montclair State University. I do talk a lot about living there, but I don't really focus so much on the actual learning part, probably because it's not as fun. So today I'm dedicating an entire video to specifically talk about education at Montclair State University, whether or not it's good, what it's really like, the professors, the class sizes, the students, everything. First of all, I want to let you guys know that I am a computer science major. So this is coming from the perspective of the computer science department. You know, every major is going to be a little bit different. Now I'm starting to get concerned that that is in the way. Hopefully nothing was dangling in the way, but I don't feel like refilming the, the first part, so. <laughs> I'm basically going to break this video up into different questions that I'm going to be answering, so kind of like separate topics. So um, I do have timestamps in the description, so if you wanna skip ahead to the part that you're interested in, then go ahead and do so. First of all, did I learn in the classroom? In most of my classes, I have found the professor's lectures to not be very helpful or impactful. Most were very boring or vague, and I ended up watching lots of videos on YouTube about the topic, which ended up being so much more helpful. I've had to do like lots of research outside of school on topics that they are supposed to cover anyway. I feel like I taught myself pretty much everything throughout college, especially once we got into online learning. For example, lots of times the professors would just read off the slides and they wouldn't provide actual value in the lectures or the information. We also didn't have to apply our skills very often. For example, until I took up a personal project, I like barely coded and I'm a computer science major. We're supposed to learn how to code. So up until that personal project, I n like never applied my skills which means that I'm forgetting stuff if I'm not applying them, you know? But I've also noticed that my professors for electives and gen eds were a little bit better. I don't know if that's because the classes aren't so like difficult, but they, the professors were actually a lot more engaged with us. I honestly don't know if these experiences are unique for Montclair or if this is how all colleges pretty much are, if all colleges are supposed to kind of force you to teach yourself instead of, you know, actually giving you all the information you need in the classroom. So, I don't know. You let me know in the comments what you think, I guess. Next question, are professors helpful and kind? So most professors I've had were fairly nice. They were pretty kind, but I've definitely had my fair share of rude ones. Some really care about your well-being, but some professors seem to want to stress you out on person and I am picturing a specific professor while I'm saying this, but I think it really all depends. In terms of being helpful, aside from the lectures, which I explained, they were typically pretty good. So I mean, like they would respond to emails, they would uh, have office hours that you could attend. Although I think one time I emailed a professor and they responded to me like in the last two weeks of the semester when I, I emailed them at like the beginning of the semester. <laughs> It was wild, but good thing I figured it out on my own, I guess. Next, how big are classes and are you just a number? This is something that I quite like about Montclair and maybe if you saw my pros video, you remember me mentioning this, but typically classes are 30 students or less, somewhere like in the 20 to 30 students range. In my in-person classes, you know, outside of COVID, my professors pretty much did know me by name, but I also did kind of like raise my hand a lot. Either way, they do know students on a more personal level, which I personally really like and I think it helps me learn. And I definitely don't feel like just a number. Is the workload big and are the classes hard? Yes. <laughs> This semester especially, I found myself working on schoolwork for like 12 hours straight, six or seven days a week. Essentially, I felt like I was working the same amount of time as a full-time employee, but obviously not getting paid. Some of the classes gave us a normal amount of work, but there are always a couple of professors that just think that they are the only class that exists and they are the most important ones. And so they give you like a whole truckload of assignments. In terms of difficulty, I think the classes are somewhere in between. They're not impossible and most people do pass, but for, you know, depending on the professor, sometimes you do really have to put in that extra effort. What classes are you required to take? So let's talk a little bit about electives and gen eds. There are quite a few requirements for those. You have to take an art class, a history class, culture, like a um, language, a gym class, just to name a few, there's a couple more. 
Oh, but don't worry about the gym class. Uh, most people just take yoga, which is really amazing and relaxing and helpful. <laughs> I would say the gen ed requirements are not too painful. The classes are usually pretty easy. They don't assign as much work. And if you take AP classes in high school, lots of your gen eds will be covered anyway. And there are lots of options. So you can pretty much pick a gen ed that is about a topic that you're actually interested in. Does MSU help with getting an internship or jobs? During their campus tours, they bragged about how they are super helpful and super good at finding internships, but this is a lie. We get emails about jobs or internship opportunities occasionally, but most of the time they're not even related to my major. And lots of times they're just postings for part-time jobs on campus, like the IT help desk, which um, is not what I'm looking for. I already have a part-time job. I need a real job. <laughs> Come on, people. I really briefly want to talk about other majors as well as elective classes. Like I said, my electives were pretty fun. Um, you can kind of pick whatever you want and it ends up being really enjoyable. And like I said, I'm a computer science major, so I don't really know anything about other majors, but I've heard that the dance and theater and performing arts programs at Montclair are amazing. And I have seen a dance performance or a few actually, and they really are amazing. <laughs> I have also heard that physics is really bad at Montclair. I don't know why, but that's just what I've heard. And I just feel like professors in those majors in like your elective classes just put so much more love and effort into their classes, um, which make them a lot more enjoyable. Anyway, if you are a different major, I have no idea. Like all of these things could be different. <laughs> and finally, what do other students think? Of course, all of this was just my own opinion, but I would say that most of the people in my classes would agree with what I said here. I do have some friends in other majors that seem to be a little bit more pleased with their education, but that could be for a number of different reasons. So I do stress that this is just from my computer science point of view. I think amongst computer science majors, all of this information is pretty much the same or pretty, pretty accurate. Having to go online for COVID also screwed some things up, so you know, all of those things could be different um, in the next few years when it moves to mostly in person again. All right, well, I think that's the end of today's video. I am planning on releasing lots more Montclair State University content, so be sure to click that subscribe button and maybe even the bell if you're feeling a little frisky uh, so that you can stay tuned and updated with all of the Montclair State content, especially if you're trying to decide which school to go to. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Sleepy cat.